In this video, we're going to talk about finding proportions in the normal distributions. So proportions in the normal distributions, we're looking at area under the standard normal curve up to a certain point. So it's not really the individual z-score that's so important on a standard normal curve. It's the area under a curve on one side or the other of that. So if you have a curve here, okay, and you have your z, we're looking at the area under the curve. And that's what's so important to us about the normal curves. Because it's indicating what proportion of a population falls in that given range. This is showing us less than that particular z-score. We use something called a z-table. So here's an example of a problem that you might have. You want to know what proportion of the population of people who took the IQ test have a score less than 76.45. If we have our standard normal curve, remember the mean on a standard normal curve is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. And we want to know what is the area on the graph that's left of 1.57. So we want to know this area right here. Remember, negative 1.57 was the standardized z-score for 76.45. So we're going to look at the z-table and we're going to look for negative 1.57. So here we have negative 1.5 and here we have 0 0.07. So together those make negative 1.57. So if we go along this line of negative 1.5 over to the 0 0.7, we find that we have 0 0.0582. That's the area that is shaded on this normal curve right here the area less than that point. So that's how you use the z-table. So if we want to know what's the area to the left of 1.75 and what's the area to the right of 1.75, let's go through how we would do that, both the left and the right. Here's our table. And we have 1.75. So here's 1.7 and here's 0 0.05. And if we go and see where those meet, we'll end up at 0 0.9599. 0 0.9599. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you put in that 0 or not but sometimes it can help you to see the decimal. Now, look at the curve that they have shaded. They have shaded to the left. So that is the area to the left. What if we want the area to the right? The area to the right is the whole thing, which we've agreed for a normal curve is 1, minus the area to the left. 
and that is going to give us 0 0.0401. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So to the right, it's going to be 0 0.0401. And to the left, it will be 0 0.9599. What if we want the area between two numbers? So let me draw a curve here. Let's figure out how to go between two numbers. Okay, we have negative 2.13, and we have. 1.09. Now the table is always going to give us what we have to the left. So if we take the area to the left of 1.09, which I will shade with the blue, okay, and we sub subtract this little tail right here, which is the area to the left of negative 2.13, what we'll be left with is all the stuff between them. So we'll go on to our chart and we'll look for 1.09. So we go to 1.0 and over to 9 and we get 0.8 six two one and from that we want to subtract we want negative two point one three so negative two point one three is zero point zero one six six point zero one six six If we go ahead and do that subtraction, we will end up with 0.8455. So that's the area between those two points. Okay, so this overlapped a little bit, but I think you can read it. Finding a value given a proportion, and we're going to use the IQ data, which is that IQs are follow a normal or approximately normal curve with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And we want the IQ score at the top 10%. Well, to find the IQ score at the top 10%, we're looking for the Z that has 90% less than it which means it's the top 10%, it has 10% above it. So which means we're looking for the Z that corresponds to 0 0.9000 on this chart. So if we look in here for 0 0.9000, where do we end up? We end up somewhere between these two, okay? So I'm going to call it 1.28 approximately, okay? 1.28 is the z-score, and that's going to be the x that we're looking for minus the mean over the standard deviation. So that'll give us 19.2 equals x minus 100. x is going to equal 119.2. So if you have an IQ score that is 119.2 or above, you're in about the top 10%. Now obviously, we didn't find precisely because we didn't have precisely 
90% on our chart. Right now we're just working with the Z chart. We are not working with the calculator. With a calculator you can get the exact. We're just working with reading the Z chart on this. So if we're looking for the bottom 20%, we're looking on this one over here. be 0 0.20. We want that shaded area to be 0 0.20. So we're going to look on here for 0 0.20. Where are we going to end up? We're going to end up right about here. And we are closest, I'm just going to pick the one that's closest, to negative 0 0.84. Negative 0.84 equals x minus 100 over 15. It's going to be negative 12.6 equals x minus 100. If we add 100 to both sides, x equals x equals 87.4. So that means that if you have an IQ that is below 87.4, you are in the bottom 20%. Anything below that is also in the bottom 20%. And the last thing we're going to look at is where we end up at the first quartile. So remember the first quartile, Q1, Remember that? That would be 0.25 because we want 25% of the data is less than or equal to the first quartile. So this time we're going to look for 0.25. And we end up at 0.25. It's almost exactly halfway between negative 0.6 and negative 0 0.68. I'm going to call that negative 0 0.675. And that will equal, again, that's the z-score. So I'll give me negative 10.125 equals x minus 100. If I add 100 to both sides, I will get x equals 89.875. So that's the value at the first quartile, 89.875.